Hey there, and welcome to my next video for the Comp 1511 Assignment 2, Pokédex. In this video, I'm going to be talking more about what a Pokémon actually is, the capital P Pokémon. Uh, so I'll be talking about the contents of Pokémon.c and Pokémon.h, and then we'll also look at how you can use these to implement the detail Pokémon function from inside Pokédex.c. For a start, I've grabbed some of the code from towards the top of Pokémon.h, which features this type def struct Pokémon star Pokémon. So what this type dev means is that a capital P Pokemon is the same as a struct Pokemon star. So more specifically, a capital P Pokemon is the same as a pointer to a Pokemon struct. You'll notice that the only thing inside Pokemon.h is this type dev here. The actual definition of the struct itself, the actual struct with all the fields inside, is not in Pokemon.h, it's in Pokemon.c. So that means that when your Pokedex.c has hash included Pokemon.h, the only thing you can access is the fact that this capital P Pokemon exists. You can't actually access inside the fields of that. Like I've talked about in some of my other videos, this capital P Pokemon is effectively like a black box to you. You know that it exists, you can pass around things of type capital P Pokemon, but you can't actually see what's inside. Your code in Pokedex.c can't see what's inside this Pokemon struct. So one thing you'll notice is that if you do try to access the fields of this Pokemon struct directly, so for example, if in Pokedex.c you try to do Pokemon arrow Pokemon ID, that's invalid. You'll get an error that says incomplete definition of type struct Pokemon. And so you'll find if you Google this error, if you look on Stack Overflow, they'll say, oh, you just need to have the contents of the struct be inside your .h file. So then you might be tempted to go and copy the contents of this struct that's in Pokemon.c, copy that into your Pokemon.h file. But that defeats the entire purpose of only having the type def in Pokemon.h and of having the struct itself be in Pokemon.c. The entire purpose of only having this type def here and not the struct itself is that you're forced to use the functions in Pokemon.h, which we'd call the interface functions, to access details about the Pokemon. So for example, Pokemon ID, Pokemon name, and so on are the functions that you can use to interact with one of these capital P Pokemon. So let's take a look at some of these functions in Pokemon.h. I've grabbed a copy of some of the code here, so some of the various functions inside Pokemon.h that you can use to interact with a Pokemon that you have. So for example, the Pokemon ID function up the top here. This function takes in a capital P Pokemon. So for example, this is like the Pokemon that's stored inside your Pokenode struct. And it will return you an int, uh, that int being the Pokemon ID of the Pokemon that you've given it. For example, if we had a Pokenode struct, so I've grabbed one here from one of my previous videos. Let's say that we have a pointer to this Pokenode struct called node, so we can use the variable node to interact with this Pokenode that we've got here. In order to access the Pokemon from inside this node, so this Pokemon field down here, we would say node arrow Pokemon. And so this Pokemon field of this node struct refers to, for example, this Pikachu that I've got down here. So it's effectively a black box queue. You can't see the Pokemon ID. You can't sort of poke inside here and go, Right, the Pokemon ID is, is 1, 2, 3. But what you can do is you can pass that Pokemon pointer, you can pass this node arrow Pokemon here, into one of the functions from Pokemon.h. So for example, this Pokemon ID function over here, to get the ID of this Pikachu, we could write Pokemon ID, and then it's a function, so the brackets, and then give it the parameter node arrow Pokemon. So that's the only way we can interact with the Pokemon from inside Pokedex.c. If we try to do Pokemon arrow Pokemon ID to try and get at the Pokemon ID field inside that Pokemon struct, that wouldn't work. We'd get that error in complete definition of type struct. So the only way that we can interact with these Pokemon from Pokedex.c is using these functions in Pokemon.h. So I've copied some code from the Pokemon.c file here, and this is where the struct itself is actually defined. So again, this struct is inside Pokemon.c, not Pokemon.h. So you can't access inside this struct from in pokedex.c. But just for curiosity's sake, let's have a look at the fields that are actually inside this. So we've got this thing called a magic number, which you can just ignore. Uh, things like the Pokemon ID, the name, the height, the weight, the type 1, type 2. So this is all information that you can get about a Pokemon. But remember, you can't access this directly by using the Pokemon error name, for example. This is not valid syntax for you to do you can only call, for example, the Pokemon name function. So I've been saying over and over, you can only call the functions you can't directly access inside the Pokemon. Let's have a look at what this would look like in terms of the code. So I've grabbed the prototype for detail Pokemon from Pokedex.c. 
and this is one of the functions you'll be writing for stage 1. So this function should print out the details of the currently selected Pokemon in this form. So for example, the ID here is 007, so it's three digits in total. Uh, the name is Squirtle, the height, the weight, the type, and so on. However, if the Pokemon hasn't been found, instead of displaying all of the information, you should print out its name as stars, the height, and the weight, and the type is just dashes, and so on. So your detail Pokemon function will need to have some way of knowing whether that Pokemon's been found. If you'd like to know more about how you can do that, you can watch my other video on finding Pokemon. But for now, let's assume that the Pokemon has been found, and look at how we'd go about using those Pokemon.h functions to find the name, the height, the weight, and so on. I've grabbed some of the prototypes for the functions from Pokemon.h so that we can see them both in the same place. And then, looking at how we could use these in our detail Pokemon function to print out information about the currently selected Pokemon. If we pretend that we have some print function here, which takes in the currently selected Pokemon, so somehow you would go about finding the currently selected Pokemon. Let's look at how you'd write this print function here, which would print out the details of the currently selected Pokemon. So the function signature would look something like this. Uh, I've just called it print for now, you can call it whatever you want, if you want to use a function for this. Um, the parameter I've called Pokemon Pokemon, so capital P Pokemon is the type, which is like this Pikachu over here. And lowercase p Pokemon is the name of the variable in this function. So in order to go about printing these out, for example, if we assume that the Pokemon has been found, so we're just printing it out in the format up here, we would need to somehow get the Pokemon's ID. So we can do that using the Pokemon ID function we've got over here. So for example, to print out the ID, we'd call the printf function with something in here. And then the ID that we'd give it to print out, the number we'd give it to print out, would be the result of calling this Pokemon ID function over here on the right with this currently selected Pokemon that we have. So I've used some different colors here to make it really clear what's going on. For example, to print out the Pokemon ID, like I said before, we'd have printf and then speech marks and then some thing to work out how to print out the number. And then the variable that we'd print out, the number that we'd be printing out, is the result of this Pokemon ID function. So we'd just call the Pokemon ID function from Pokemon.h, this one up here, and the parameter that we'd give it would be this Pokemon, so the Pokemon that was passed into our print function. We'd then do a similar thing to print out the name. So again, the name over here is Squirtle, and assuming that it's been found, we can work out the name by using this Pokemon name function over here. So we'd do a very similar thing. We'd have printf with whatever the stuff in here is to print out the correct type. And then we'd have the result of calling this Pokemon name function. So again, I've color coded it to hopefully make it clearer. Printf some stuff in here to make it print out the right type. And then the result of calling this Pokemon name function over here from Pokemon.h with this Pokemon that we've passed in. In terms of what that would look like with our diagram I've got over here, this Pokemon Pokemon, which we passed into our print function based on getting the currently selected Pokemon from our Pokedex, this function would be given this Pokemon down here. So it would be a capital P Pokemon, which means it's of type pointer to a Pokemon struct, the one that's in Pokemon.c. We simply pass that into the relevant function from Pokemon.h, and then it gives us back details about that Pokemon. So remember, we can't look inside this Pokemon here, we can't directly look at this and see Pikachu's name and height and so on. We can only use these functions from Pokemon.h. I feel like I've said that about a million times now, hopefully it's starting to become clear to you. But that's pretty much it for this video. The takeaway message is that capital P Pokemon is of type pointer to Pokemon struct, but you can't directly access inside that Pokemon struct because it's in Pokemon.c and you've only hash included Pokemon.h. So, in order to actually interact with that Pokemon, to get its name, its ID, its height, and so on, we have to use the functions inside Pokemon.h. So, hopefully that's all made sense. If you've got any questions, you can ask them on the course forum, and otherwise, I'll see you in my next video.